water resists changes in temperature more than any substance. That means here, how much snow you guys get here a year? Not a lot. Why? Because you're near what? Water. And that water's like a battery. There's love being made between the earth and the sun. There's love being made between the fire of the sun and the water on the earth. And the fire of the sun impregnates the water with heat. And she heats up and she heats up and she heats up. And then she holds that heat through the winter time. So what happens is in a place like this, it can never get that cold because there's so much water. And every water molecule is holding heat, resonating heat energy that it picked up from the sun. And that keeps it mild here. Who's been to the desert? There's very, very little humidity. There's very little water in the atmosphere, the atmosphere of the desert. So when you're in the desert, it's hot, 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 and then the sun sets and it's cold instantly. Have you ever seen that happen? The sun sets in the desert and it's like, oh my God, it's freezing because there's no water to hold the heat. Does everyone follow that? It's that principle, specific heat in water that keeps the planet from freezing. It's very powerful. That's a very powerful idea. If it wasn't for that water having that property, we wouldn't have life on the planet. What cold really is, is an absence of energy. And what heat is, is the measurement of energy added into a thing, causing it to vibrate. So when we start to pull energy out of a thing, it starts to cool. And the molecules that are vibrating, they're vibrating and they're pushed away from each other because they're vibrating. So the water molecules are vibrating and they push each other away and they spread out. If it gets real hot, it'll spread out so much it'll become a gas and the molecules will float around. Does that make sense? If we heat up her spoon, I'll stop picking that spoon up. The molecules heat up and they start to move away from each other so the thing expands. And if we start to remove energy from the system, it cools, they start to move together. So you've got water, say we've got water up here as gas, and the, 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 the water in this air. If we put out something very, very cold, imagine I just was full of ice and I just pulled it out of the freezer. We set it here. What forms on the outside of, the, of that container? And what do we call it? What do we call it? Condense, condense, condensation. Because the water in the atmosphere is warm, but that cold starts to suck heat out of the atmospheric water and it cools and it contracts until it forms droplets. It condenses itself. That makes sense? Now water will do that. It will condense as it cools. Like all substances, will continue to condense until it hits what we call the, and this is a scientific term for this, it hits the anomaly point of four degrees Celsius. Water will contract and contract and contract until it hits four degrees Celsius and then for some completely misunderstood reason, expands again. Other substances don't do that. They will continue to contract. So what happens is if I put a full bottle in the freezer, if we watched it, right, if we had time-lapse photography and it was full of water, what we'd see is as it cools, the water level would go down. It's contracting. When it hits four degrees Celsius, oops, and the glass shatters in the freezer. Has anyone ever done that? I left a, a bottle in your car and it explodes because the water expands. That's very interesting, right? Now imagine this, when water gets dense, when it condenses and it moves together, it gets heavier because any given amount of water is gonna have more water molecules in it because they move together. It's gonna get heavier. So if we have a lake, a body of water, the water that's getting cold is gonna get heavy and it's gonna sink. Anybody ever swum down deep in a lake like you're on the top and you're floating and it's like warm? And then you swim down and it starts getting cold if you go down to where your ears start popping, it's like almost too cold to swim in. Because the cold water sinks. Because it's heavier, because it's denser. So it sinks to the bottom. So you have this cold, cold water at the bottom. Now, if water didn't do the trick that it does, if it didn't have this anomaly point of four degrees Celsius, what would happen is the water would sink to the bottom and then it would freeze from the bottom. And then it would freeze its way to the surface, annihilating all the life forms that live in that lake, right? But what actually happens? The water down at the bottom hits four degrees Celsius and goes and floats to the surface and then the ice forms at the surface, insulating the water inside the lake so the life forms can stay in there. That's profound because no other substance would do that. Does that make sense why scientists, it's like we're looking for life forms on other planets, we're looking for water? 
because with that water is so unique that unless there's some other type of life form that works on completely different physiological principles than we do, there's no way we're going to encounter life forms that aren't based on water because water is the unique, magical principle that allows life.